Cheers from Japan. I'm the Tokyo Toy Bastard. All right, switching gears with some Dragon Ball stuff. I found this giant lot of Dragon Ball Z Yutaka figures produced around 1991-1992 on Yahoo Auctions Japan. This was a lot that I actually posted for sale on the Vintage Dragon Ball group that I run, Dragon Ball Vintage Collectors, on Facebook. Check it out if you haven't already. But uh, yeah, this was already bought by my friend Stephanie, aka SSJ Goshen 4 who is a Dragon Ball YouTuber. The reason I'm showing you this is also to brag that I found all this. But I also found this amazing and rare variant with the red joints for the arms. And also one of his wristbands is unpainted. This is something for my private collection since I do collect variants of these figures. But yeah, had to show you guys this. A couple weeks ago I also found this box set of Battle Z collection plastic model kits from 1992. This was actually the first of two different kits, one of base form characters and then one with Super Saiyan versions that also had Android 16. Here is what they look like assembled. I already have the set and I recently sold some loose versions but I wanted to have this set because they are completely untouched, mint sealed. Mm. If you would like to shoot me an offer or talk turkey, uh, just hit me up on Instagram. I may part with this guy. Yesterday, I found this really cool jumbo-sized Menko card, which was basically a game similar to Pogs. It was really popular in the 80s and 90s in Japan, so they released a lot of licensed character versions. And this is one of the larger sized ones, which I collect, and the artwork on this is really cool. So they had a bunch of different ones. If you're interested in something like this, or even the smaller ones, I find them often. I just don't usually pick them up. But uh, yeah, it's just cardboard on the back. If that's something you're into, let me know. I can grab more. But this one's for my collection. All right, we're about to get into some Keshi, but before we get into that, I would like to show you this. This is a vintage Dragon Ball Z timer, or stopwatch. If you flip it on the back, you turn this. If it's done, and then you push this button, and you get to see all the gears turn. Really cool. But yeah, this actually came in a set on a blister card. Here's the blister card. The blister card itself was kind of damaged, so I took it out. But, uh, oops, there's the back. This was produced by Plex in, I'm going to say sometime around 1989, 1990. Oops, again. And it was also sold with this little Goku Keshi, which is awesome. This is a really hard to find Keshi. Super stoked to get this one. And also some strength. Last weekend, I found this complete set of super clean, minty fresh, epoch Dragon Ball Keshi from around 1986. Yeah, this originally came in a box set, but it's really pricey, and I was happy to find these loose and minty fresh with a little vintage Dragon Ball. I found this for a deal. I already had about half of these in my collection. I ended up selling those and just keeping these for myself. The best one in here is definitely Bulma's bike. Here we have an assortment of vintage Dragon Ball Goku Keshi. These are larger sized Keshi that were released in the early 90s by Plex slash Yutaka. And if you look at these compared to the Keshi I just showed you, you can see that these are actually yeah, much larger. Basically, these are like three, three quarter Star Wars action figure scale. And I've got the painted version. I've got the fleshy, I've got the orange, and I've got the blue. However, I've been after all the different color variants. I was not aware of how many different colors they made, but I assume they made them in the same colors as all the other standard Dragon Ball Z Keshi, which would be flesh, orange, blue, green, and yellow. Never been able to find green or yellow, but this past weekend, I did find green. So I think all I need to find now is yellow. So I've been finding loads and loads of the armored cross up and full metal jacket and all of those various lines over the past couple months because people keep requesting me to find them. So I've 
bought and sold dozens and dozens of them. However, there have been some that I've been after and I'm not gonna showcase all of them in this video. I probably need to do another follow-up video to my Dragon Ball cross-up uh, and armored uh, figure collection. If you haven't watched, I've already published a couple different videos about that. But these were some that had always escaped me and now I finally own them. Uh, we've got this really rare metal armored Gohan with his cape and everything. I have found this before, but he's always missing his cape. So he's made out of the die cast metal. For some reason, I could never find this Saiyan armored Goku. So here he is in blue. I actually found two of these. I already sold the other one. And uh, yeah, that one's really cool. And these guys here, these are two of the hardest ones to find in the cross up collection. So here we have Frieza in his fat head form. Uh, complete with his tail and everything and this one's unique because you can actually take his head apart to reveal his initial form really cool obviously these pieces are always missing so really hard to find that complete super happy to have it now and also we have cooler he's got a little bit of a stain here, a bit of a stain here but still this figure is super hard to find with all of his little bracelets and anklets and mask and tail, bracelets and anklets and ma mask and tail and all that stuff. And same thing with him, you can take all this stuff off, including his mask, to reveal his final form. Super, super sexy. I almost forgot this great Saiyan Keshi. Also very rare, probably rarer than the other ones. This was expensive. And his helmet comes off. Look at that! Speaking of the armor Dragon Ball Keshi, something I've always wanted was a guide to all of the different variants and waves and series of all the different Dragon Ball armored Keshi. Because people ask me about them all the time and the names of each series are so similar. It gets so confusing. So, finally, someone fucking made a book. Look at that. That's it. PVC Magazine and it says Broly. It does have a little uh, chapter about Broly inside, but it's just a few pages about the different Broly Keshi. But the rest of the book is essentially just a guide to all the different armored Dragon Ball Keshi lines. So it is super awesome to have this, an invaluable resource, and these sold out super fast. I grabbed a few and they sold out. And they sold out at Mandarake where they were selling these really fast. So if you want to get your hands on this, I'll see if I can find some more, but I, the last time I went back, they were all gone, so snooze, you'll lose. Ho, yo, 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 it's time for Dr. Slump. I found this uh, Arale Chen about a month or two ago, uh, and it's one I've been wanting. It is a coin bank produced in the early to mid 80s and goes for quite a pretty penny. And then yesterday, I found an even rarer version of the coin bank from that same period of Arale wearing some kind of crazy roller skate outfit. Yeah. This was actually a little bit cheaper than this one, even though this is more rare. But now I've got a little collection of Arale coin banks made of soft vinyl that are super rad. But don't forget about me! This is an Arale whistle produced also in the 80s. I'm not gonna put it in my mouth, coronavirus. Here's a little tag. Mint Peepo. Hmm. But I assume this is probably sold at like candy store or something. Really cool. So I've expanded my Arale Soft Vinyl Collection. On my birthday, I was also gifted this Dr. Slump playset, which is super awesome. My friend Yuji got this for me. I have another playset, which I meant to do a review of and forgot to. So maybe I'll just get some more of these and just do a bigger review. But yeah, it goes to the Keshi. Has these little street signs and stuff. And it's got this cool like little mushroom uh, house thing that is translucent and opens and closes. But yeah, it goes with Keshi. Speaking of Dr. Slump Keshi, I actually found a bunch of really rare sculpts that I hadn't been able to find before. Well, some of these are really rare, some are more common, but I think my favorite uh, out of all of these is the little Ultraman here. But yeah, you can basically decorate these on these little play sets and it looks really cool. Now these are actually Arale figures that I did not find here in Japan. These are reproduction Keshi produced by my friend Eric Nilla. You can buy some stuff from him, check him out. But they are all glow in the dark. 
And basically, these are just a recast of a really rare Arale Keshi in military fatigue from the 80s that currently sells for $100 to $200. So, yeah, I wasn't going to pay that for one Keshi. So I, I would much rather pay uh, half of that and get like a rainbow assortment of glow-in-the-dark versions. So, yeah, thanks again, man. Thanks to Eric Nilla. Check him out. All right, it's time for some Shin Chan, some Crayon Shin Chan stuff. Uh, I do collect Crayon Shin Chan, not as much as some of the other stuff that I collect, but I do collect it, and these are the coolest things in my collection currently. These are Keshi from the early 90s, and the thing that makes these so awesome is that they have pieces that are removable. So here we have Shin Chan as Action Kamen, but look, you can take off his mask, and now he's just surprised Shin Chan. And you can swap these out. So here I've got a solid flesh colored version. So if I want to, I could take this mask off and stick it on him. And then I could take the yellow one, stick it on him. By the way, I don't know why this is purple. I don't know if this is like some kind of color changing type of Keshi they used, but it kind of looks neat. I like this purple marbleized look it has. And we've also got Shin Chan as a robber. Take it off. Also, you'll notice that these are two different sculpts. This third sculpt Ow. here is uh, Shin Chan with a bra over his eyes. Yes, that is a bra. And he's wearing a cape. Gotta love the expression on that one. And I also found a ton of other Crayon Shin Chan Keshi. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all of these. I will pick out one that I found yesterday that I really enjoy. Uh, it's this one right here. Of Shin Chan holding a dead frog. Amazing. Up next, I found these uh, vintage slam dunk articulated Keshi, which I saw in a book uh, a couple years back, and I thought they were really cool. I've actually not really watched much of slam dunk, but my wife grew up with it, and she loves it. I am very familiar with the manga artist, and I love his style, and I did grow up playing basketball. So there is something that kind of uh, hits home with me about this, and the fact that these Keshi are so cool and articulated and done in these two colors. I couldn't pass these up and they're so clean and uh, yeah, I've never seen these before out in the wild so I had to grab them. I mean, look at these Keshi sneakers. Yo man, you wanna go shoot some hoops? Nah man, I'd rather go watch YouTube and check out some Tokyo Toy Bastard action. It's fucking coronavirus out there. <laughs> 